like the imagined peace power here on this tiny little island. This magnificent piece of art will light the, up the dark of this Reykjavik sky until the 8th of December. That day marks John Lennon's tragic death. During this period, this remarkable beam will join in with the starky skies and the northern highlight to remind us all of Yoko's Ono's and John Lennon's hope for world peace. The Peace Tower has also inspired us to host an annual peace conference in collaboration with Hövde, the Reykjavik Peace Center, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the United Nations University for Gender Equality, which is based in Reykjavik, and we are quite proud of. The forum is immediately following the light of the Peace Tower. This year, the theme is Women for Peace, and I'll encourage all of you who have the opportunity to attend the conference that starts tomorrow morning. I would like to introduce Ms. Madeleine Rees, Secretary General of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, one of the main speakers of the conference, to say a few words in the name of peace. Madeleine. Thank you so much, people. They can't even see you anymore because of the bright lights. John Lennon's birthday. Could we please have at least a round of applause for John Lennon in case he's listening out there? <laughs> he gave us the idea of imagining peace. And a woman called Doris Lessing, a famous author, she wrote, if you can imagine something strongly enough, there will be a time when you will achieve it. But imagining isn't good enough. We need action. We need our thoughts to become words and our words to become deeds. Organization I work for, 1915 they were formed, and they tried to stop the First World War, and they analyzed what we had to do. Three things. The causes of war, inequalities between people and between nations. We've got that one nailed. We now have the 1% who earn more than the 99% put together. Inequalities we have to deal with. Militarism is a way of thought. We can no longer sustain the way in which we do security. We can no longer sustain the monies that we put into nuclear warfare, into building military arsenals, into a militarized vision of security, which prevents us spending all the monies that we should do on equalities on social securities, on education, and on health. Iceland, you are ahead in these things. You are the most peaceful nation on earth, and you can show us leadership in how we can achieve what we believe to be necessary. All the young people here, our generation, need and must respond to what we are doing to the planet. What I've talked about in terms of the militarization, in terms of the, the way in which we exploit the planet, are destroying your futures. We are draining the resources from the earth which we need to sustain us and which we must respond to those demands with in change. Which requires all of us now to do something which many of us didn't want to do. Being a peace activist is hard work. Peace does not come easy. It's hard work. It's constant work, and it always, always <coughs> needs all of us to work together to make it happen. To imagine peace is to change the way we think, to change the way we act, and to actually work towards a different future than the one that has been assigned to us. It means moving away from this idea that because you're born as a boy or because you're born as a girl, you have to perform a particular role. No, we are better than that. We have our ways of being which must be recognized, which must be expressed, and which will give us the freedom to create the peace that the world is so obviously crying out for. Tonight it's cold, but it's a beautiful setting, and we have warmth between us, which we can then bring into the public spaces to make the difference that the world so needs right now, and that is to have peaceful, resolution, sustainable goals for a different agenda and a different way of being. This we can do. We have to hold to that imagination, deeds, 
not words, we can make this happen. Thank you. Woo!